Thank you. Well, thanks for Arvind and Dr. Manoj. Kind words of introduction. Dr. Manoj, thank you as a scientific chairman for giving me an opportunity to talk on a very important topic and I am the king batsman. Next 15 to 20 minutes, we are talking on continuous glucose monitoring as a part of standard of care. That is what the Indian perspective talking because recently we had come out with Indian guidelines. My agenda will be, we will be, what are the unmet need in glucose monitoring? A refresher on CGM and use of AGP. This is just for a few slides. Wanted to tell all primary care physicians what exactly continuous glucose monitoring or ML, well, what we do. Then a case for customized time in range target in our Indian population. Slightly, we're talking about the Indian guidelines also and setting up CGM as a part of routine care. The glucose monitoring, self-monitored blood glucose level, we know that less than one-fourth of our patients who are actually achieving a target, less, less than seven HB1. As per the guideline, now this is the international paper which is talking that those patients who are on insulin should do more than 10 times those guys self-monitor. While real world, those patients who are using self-monitoring, they are doing less than four. Now this is the data which I am talking of. Patients who are treated in western part of the world where the less than four times in a day if they are using glucose monitor for their monitoring of blood glucose. If I say the situation in India, in the next slide, the SMBG less than once in a day. This is the Z data. This is the data for type 2 diabetes. It's not for type 1 diabetes. Where I was also the part of it. And this is the Asian data from all different parts of the Asian countries. They have come out with a data that Patients actually who are to be monitored more than two or three times in a day are actually monitoring less than once in a week. This is what the data is. Now, those patients who are having heart failure or even uh, established cardiovascular disease, whom we have asked them to monitor more frequently, even they are patients with reduced EGFR or CKD, even they are also doing less than 50% of the time they doing continuous, I mean self-monitoring of blood glucose and whenever they are asked for once in a day, they are doing less than once in a week. So this is the what the frequency of doing self-monitoring of blood glucose in our country and in other Asian countries also. The self-monitor of blood glucose from RSSDA in 2018, we have come out that SMBG definitely complements HB1C testing for evaluation and monitoring of glycemic control. Despite the importance of SMBG routine, SMBG use in our country is only 11%. Patients may find SMBG inconvenient, painful and cumbersome. And another hurdle is ignorance of patients towards the seriousness of diabetes and its complication. So the recommended care and frequency of SMBG, even in our guideline of RSSDI in 2018, then we had come out with a monitoring guideline and even 2022 guidelines, we have come that the patients, yes, definitely it has to be very much individualized, but those patients who are insulin, they should monitor their glucose more frequently. So there are limitations for A1C also. This is what I talked about. SMBG is very good tool for monitoring, but the problem is the patients are not monitoring regularly or they are not monitoring frequently. Also, the limitation of A1C is it gives you the average of last three months. A1C remains the key indicator for long-term diabetes complication in people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. While A1C reflects the average of it, it does not give you any idea about the acute glycemic excursion, whether it is hypo and hyperglycemic. A1C fails to identify the magnitude and frequency of intra and interday glucose variation and conditions such as anemia, hemoglobinopathies and iron deficiency even in pregnancy can confound the A1C measurement and leading to inaccurate measurements of these mean glucose value also. The glycemic targets as per the standard of care in American Diabetic Association in 2023, what they are saying about the continuous glucose monitoring, it is rapidly improving diabetes management. While A1C is currently the primary measure to guide the glucose management, valuable risk marker for developing diabetes complication, CGM metrics like time in range, with time below range and time above range and GMI provide the insight for more personalized diabetes management. This is what ADA in 2023. RSSDI in 2022 guideline that CGM should be considered in conjunction with SMBG and HB1C for glycemic status, two types of CGM which are available in our country and CGM can be helpful tool in diabetic education for facilitating an effective communication between clinician and patients. 
what is CGM and use of AGP? Those who are not using it just for the sake that CGM is in a continuous glucose monitor. It's a sensor which is inserted under the skin. In every minute, the readings has been done and 15 minutes, they take the reading and CGM measures interstitial glucose level. This is very important for everyone to understand. And there is a lag time of 5 to 15 minutes. I mean, acutely glycemic excursion, suppose suddenly patient sugar goes from 200 to 300, the acute glycemic excursion may not be detected with that. The components which are available with us is a sensor, the uh, sensor applicator and the reader, all three which are available in our country. We used to do the continuous glucose monitoring with a previous glucose sensor which was by other company but the report which is been uh, done by this particular sensor is coming in an ambulatory glucose profile. So last 14 days you can see a graphical uh, representation and you can see with this ambulatory glucose profile that where the person's sugar is going high or low and this becomes very very easy for interpretation particularly for clinician. There are key benefits, benefits for healthcare professional and benefits for patients both because AGP graph clearly shows the patterns. AGP graph provides the information which healthcare provider needs to help them more informed treatment decision. While benefits for patients is information in AGP graph is presented in a very simplified way that makes is easy to understand and the AGP graph provides a link between day-to-day -day behavior and glucose level. The patient-led and professional CGM both are available in our country and still it is Libre, it's not Libre 2 which is available and we have Libre Pro which is also available in our country. Now, customized time in range targets which is for Indian population, there are two guidelines after 2019 uh, guideline which was international guideline. The India had come out with an expert consensus just before some time where I was also the part of it for my Dr. V. Mohan, why he thought of there should be a consensus recommendation on the use of CGM. Uh, for India, uh, we were also trying to advocating time in range more uh, frequently across the country and differences in diet, ethnicity, cultural and religious practice and diverse phenotypes have been taken in account while formulating recommendation for India. The recommendation across patient profile including number of sensors per year to be used that is also been formulated in this guideline. But before I talk about this guideline, let me talk about the clinical targets which is continuous glucose monitoring data on there the time in range was a consensus recommendation. I was also part of that meeting, Dr. Pratik who is here, he was also the part of this uh, expert consensus and what we found that uh, what we have decided in this consensus that those who are using continuous glucose monitoring more than 70 percent of the time they should be in time in range and the time in range between 70 to 180 so more than 70 percent of the time but what is more important is it is not allowed for them to go more than five percent of the time below 70 if it happens if there is a time below range goes more than five percent then we have to change the therapy there is a hyperglycemia is 1 and stage 2 where more than 180 and 250, more than 250, again it is not allowed more than 5% of the time if they are on continuous glucose monitoring and we have to change the therapy for them if they are going more than 250, more than 5% of the time. So the idea is to keep uh, regularly those who are coming to your clinic as a type 1 or type 2 diabetic patients using continuous glucose monitoring, they should remain for more than 70% of the time range between 70 to 180. Those who are elderly, high risk, cardiovascular patient with high risk of hypoglycemia, even it is recommended more than 50% of the time they should be between 70 to 180. In pregnancy, the control becomes more tighter. Instead of up to 180, it is up to 140 it is recommended and those type 2 diabetes in becoming uh, pregnant or GDM, to GDM, it should be more than 90% of the time they should be between 70 to 140 is what recommended even 63 to 140 which is more tighter glucose control is recommended now there is a need for customized guideline for india as i already told you about the high carbohydrate diet ethnic differences we have cultural and religious practice geographical variation psychosocial behavior and unique cluster of type 2 diabetes which we have in our country and for that we should have our own guideline or the recommendation which is there in international uh, recommendation we are just slightly customized for it and that what dr v mohan thought of and along with him many experts from all over india we have come out with guideline for expert consensus so the recommendation for those who are uh, taking a lot of high carbs diet 
The daily carbohydrate consumption, as we know, that is very high. We use the uh, similar time in range. They should also achieve more than 70% of the time. But still, it is a personalized achievable targets which you have to give for a time in range that should be considered in individual in a clinical setting. <coughs> the uh, CGM and time in range should be continuously used whenever it is feasible, particularly for type 1 diabetes. So in India also strongly recommended, strongly recommend using continuous glucose monitoring for pediatric population and preferably they should be in a range of more than 70% and primarily we should try to reduce the time below range which is very very important for us. In a different Profile patients using for type 2 diabetic patients, it is really difficult because those patients who are not on insulin therapy, still it is recommended for them for modify or readjust the therapy. So using intermittently continuous glucose monitoring rather than using continuous glucose monitoring and the concept study had shown particularly for who are GDM or uh, with pregnancy and hyperglycemia, employing continuous glucose monitoring based methods can reduce uh, uh, low gestational uh, LGA, neonatal hypoglycemia and neonatal ICU admission also for this. The other consensus statement, the CGM helps to adjust the diet and physical activity. CGM can identify the glucose pattern and glycemic targets and in patients who are on polypills are afraid to initiate insulin, actually CGM can help them to initiate or to uh, educate them that they can be convinced easily to initiate the insulin as per requirement. The usual uh, discordance between CGM and glucose meter reading is addressed by because there is a lag time. So still we advise that if they are using continuous glucose monitoring still in between whenever they have feeling of hypoglycemia, they must check their sugar level too. The risk of microalbuminuria is significantly decreased. This is not the data from India, but it's an international data that using continuous glucose monitoring or time in range, does it help uh, as far as complications are reduced? Yes, there are some data to show that the risk of rates of microalbuminuria uh, which is increased by 40% with every 10% decrease in time in range. So, better the time in range and lesser the microvascular complication or lesser the mi uh, microalbuminuria. Mean percentage time in range was 32% in participants that developed it while versus 42% patients who had not uh, achieving the time in range. There is an International Diabetes Society endorsed the use of time in range addition of A1C. Even uh, Diabetes India is also the part of it. We have sent our consent letter after the publication. That was the only thing. Otherwise, we were there. The, uh, the different society from all over the world, whether it is a ADA, AS or ESD, in even SPAD also, everybody had recommended that now using a time in range should be a metric for glucose monitoring rather than using only A1C or only depending on self-monitoring of blood glucose. Setting up CGM is a part of routine care. The RSSDA, again, I am coming out with the 2022 guideline. The recommendation of CGM, clinical situation that may require greater glucose monitoring accuracy. This is our in 2022. The patients who have history of severe hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia unawareness, those with pregnancy with diabetes, infants and children who are receiving insulin therapy, patients who are risk of hypoglycemia, including patients who are receiving even basal insulin therapy also, patients receiving definitely basal bolus therapy, patients receiving even sulfonylurea glenides, which can lead to hypoglycemia, even they are also recommended for continuous glucose monitoring, patients with irregular schedule who are skipped or small meals or vigorous exercise, travel between time zones, disrupted sleep schedules and even shift workers also required to have a continuous glucose monitoring, which is what recommended in RSDA 2022 guidelines. People with occupational risk that enhance possible risk with hypoglycemia, possibly those who are driver or operating uh, the machinery which can be very hazardous for themselves as well as for others, there also continuous glucose monitoring is recommended. This is the time in range, the other paper which has come from the Anup Mishra and group with Dr. Jyoti Dev had written that what should be the frequency of using continuous glucose monitoring particularly for type 2 diabetic patients and they are uh, type 2 diabetic patients who are using intermittently CGM. So the frequency for those who are having uh, achieving time in range more than 90%, more than 90%. This recommendation frequency could be even once in six months. Dr. S. R. Arvind was also part of it. Uh, those who are achieving good control, it means more than 70%, 
once in three months using intermittent continuous glucose monitoring is sufficient and those who are not able to achieve time in range even 50 percent or less than 50 percent it depends on it could be done even every month or every two months this is what recommendation from south asia we were having uh, many experts including dr pratik Chaudhary. we invited him for this paper uh, as a indian origin based in uk uh, for for asia this recommendation which we have done one more recommendation in this particular, what we have changed, because uh, the international recommendation has not put the grade 2 hyperglycemia, more than 250 they have put. But we had that grade 3 hyperglycemia, that no patient should go more than 350. If Even for 1 minute or 2 minute, if someone goes more than 350, then he, his therapy should be immediately changed. So that was also one more change which we have done in this particular guideline or recommendation, <coughs> which is done from South Asia. The simple CGM initial checklist is a person should be uh, uh, first willing to use and the doctor should be willing to use. I mean, that's very, very important and he should educate the person and those who are using, they should not undergo for MRI. At least MRI, I always say and frequency of electric high treatment while wearing the continuous glucose monitoring and those who have allergy to adhesive, even they can be recommended not to use it for that. This is a one paper which we have written and time in range is a target for type 2 diabetes and this is for type 2 diabetes still recommendation is not very clear as far as SMBG is concerned or whether the CGM. As I told you already the Jyoti Dev and Anup Mishra had come out with a recommendation because those who are not achieving a good control intermittently they can still use it and continuously they may not afford it particularly from Asian countries. So every two months, three months or four months but still for type 2 diabetes, how it can be very useful, I just want to give an example and then I will close. Uh, this is one patient who had come with the HP1C of 9. And patient was already on a triple drug, sulfonylurea, gliptin and metformin. So with the triple drug therapy, a patient whose HP1C is more than 9, recommendation is insulin. Patient had gone to to other consultant and everybody had recommended that you should be on insulin because your HP1C is now more than 9. The patient was already more than 8 years of diabetes. There is no reason guideline will also tell the patient should be on insulin. I was the third consultant. Patient was not ready to understand that he is not ready to take the insulin also. So we explained, let us do your continuous glucose monitoring. This is Libre Pro, intermittently intermittent use of CGM, we asked the person to come again after 5 days and we have not changed anything. Whatever he was there, I could not convince the patient neither for insulin nor for any change of therapy. We just convinced the patient to put the on CGM. After 5 or 6 days, I had shown the uh, result to the patient that see your sugar is all the time, even your fasting is more than 150. By all recommendation, you should be at least on basal insulin. But there is a choice if I want. I can put you on GLP-1. That is what now uh, recommendation is also since last five years that GLP can be even before the patient who can be on insulin. He had asked the person to put on GLP-1 and SGLT-2. I removed his uh, liptin, definitely GLP-1 we are adding and SGLT-2 added. And what I asked him, every alternate day, please call me because he was already on a 4 milligram of glimipride. So my educator was every alternate day his fasting sugar, whatever came, we reduce his glimmy pride from 4 to 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 0.5. And when patient came on 10th day, this is the report. You can see the report of last 5 days on 10th day when patient came. So the next day what I have done, I stopped his even glimmy pride of that 0.5 milligram again. Now patient is only on SGLT2 inhibitor, only on GLP-1 and only on uh, metformin. This is the last 4 days report. So you can say that how continuous glucose monitoring can be helpful for convincing the patient and initiating the new therapy. Even as per the guideline, the patient should be recommended insulin therapy. This is what the guideline is saying. More than 9 patients should be on H therapy only. So this is what how a continuous glucose monitoring can help in your clinical practice. There is a appropriate sensor prescription when you should use Libre and when should you use Libre Pro and RSSDI recommendation again for the same. To summarize my talk, while HBNC remains the key indicator for long-term diabetes complication, but it does not reflect short-term changes in blood glucose on glycemic variability. CGM can more personalize diabetes management plan. 
EGP graph is valuable tool that may enhance the communication and partnership between healthcare professional and their patient. There is no one size fit for all CGM. The prescription of type of CGM is also very important and recent recommendation and consensus paper provide insight into incorporating CGM in our Indian context. With this, I thank once again, thank you chairperson for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Uh,